What's up Chaos Shinobi here if you enjoy the story like and subscribe so I can make more awesome videos for you guys chapter 1. Hey, Hatra Doin, a boy with dark brown hair asked, staring at the blonde before him. Naruto had been sitting comfortably beforehand, in a complete state of concentration, but this boy had pulled him from his trance. I'm focusing chakra, Naruto replied quickly, and I need to concentrate. So if you don't mind. The boy looked around for a moment before he returned his attention to the blonde. Why are you doing that in the woods? You should get home. The woods are dangerous. I'll be fine, the nine-year-old boy replied, his concentration once again broken. Could you leave me alone now? Naruto once again entered his meditative state, but before long he was interrupted from his thoughts. The boy was poking him with a stick. That's it. Naruto yelled, but as he got up, he heard a stomping through the woods before being knocked away by an older girl. Leave my little brother alone you monster. The girl yelled kicking debris at him. The other boy tried to stop his sister, but Naruto had already fled from the scene. Don't you ever talk to that thing. She scolded the boy. He's dangerous. Naruto had barely made it out of that situation. He knew that if other people had seen it, it could have turned into a full-scale fox hunt, with him playing the role of prey. The only reason he'd managed to survive the last one was because Alone and Bu had risked his own safety to pull Naruto out of the mob. The boy was certain that, had the ANBU not saved him, he wouldn't be alive today. Unfortunately, the number of people that treated Naruto with kindness was extremely limited. Snake, Ainu, Weasel, Iruka, the Hakage, Old Man Akiraku, and his daughter Aim. At least there were some people that cared, but they could only do so much to stop the people that wanted to hurt him. And those people far outnumbered the others. Hey, Naruto, a tan, dark-haired man stated cheerily, placing his hands on the boy's shoulders. Naruto jumped reflexively, still slightly panicking over the earlier event. Are you okay? Why yes, Iruka-sensei, the boy quickly replied, his dilated pupils staring directly into those of his teacher. What happened? Iruka asked, crouching down to Naruto's eye level. Nothing sensei, Naruto tried to lie, thought he could tell it wasn't working. Alright, if you tell me what it is, I'll take you out for a few bowls of ramen. The bribe worked immediately. Iruka could tell by the bright glow seeming to radiate from Naruto's eyes. He couldn't help but feel like he'd been had. Ten bowls of ramen and one depressing story later, Naruto was sitting with Iruka in silence. Why do people hate me, sensei? The boy asked, his eyes on the floor. I wish I could tell you, Naruto, Iruka replied steadily. Let's just say that they can't let go of the past or their own sins. What's that mean? Sensei, the boy asked, obviously trying to comprehend what the man before him was saying was giving him a headache. You'll understand one day, Naruto. Okay, Sensei, if you say so. Iruka smiled at the boy as he began to finish his 11th bowl. It was amazing how quickly he could shift between emotions. Anyway, I'd suggest you get home now, Naruto. Iruka continued, paying the bill. It's getting late and you have school in the morning. Naruto's eyes popped open and he began to choke on his food. And for Pete's sake slow down. The man finished, performing the Heimlich maneuver to unhinge the raiment from the boy's throat. All right, sensei, the blonde replied, gasping for air. But could I get you to walk me? Of course, the man answered, ruffling the boy's hair. This way I know for a fact what time you got home. So you can't use that as an excuse tomorrow if you're late. Naruto smiled and began walking with his sensei in tow. They both knew that wasn't the real reason Iruka was walking him home. After all, a ninja's best work is done at night. Yakugan. Naruto's voice reverberated off the walls in his living room once, before everything fell silent again. The Hakage had given Naruto a few books for his ninth birthday a few weeks prior, and one of the books, A History of the Clans and Bloodlines of Kano Hegekir had caught his attention. Naruto knew there were techniques that only a few people could learn, but this book introduced him to judges that only people with a certain lineage could learn. The first thing Naruto did after reading through each section was attempt that clan's bloodline limit. Naruto had no known family, so he concluded that it was possible that one of his parents could have been from a clan with a bloodline. He'd already tried the Mokutan bloodline, hoping he was the direct descendant of the first Hakage. He was wrong. The next ones he'd tried were a little different, the Akamaki body expansion, the Sharingan, and a few other minor ones. When Naruto turned to the second to last section and found it relatively empty, he got confused. The only information the book offered on the recluse of Hiwaga clan was a picture of the Byakuganai, how to activate it, and a brief history of the clan itself. 
That was it. There was, however, the information Naruto needed in it. After the required hand signs and focusing his chakra to his eyes, he felt he should call out the name of the bloodline. Just for good measure, he wasn't too surprised when nothing happened. He gazed traveling down to the pupilless eyes of the Hiwaga man in the picture. With striking force, Naruto's head exploded in pain, and, as he hit the floor, he started screaming. Anything was better than this pain, let him die, give him back to the mob, send him through torture, just get rid of the pain. But as quickly as it appeared, it was gone. And Naruto's vision began to return to normal. No, not normal, it was better than normal. All the colors around him were crisp and sharp and everything was the perfect tone. He could see into the nooks and crannies of his apartment and even behind him. Wait. Behind me? Naruto asked himself as he lifted his leg behind him. And below? What about above? The blonde lifted his hand in the air. So this is what the Byakugan does? What else can it do? Naruto began to ponder on the subject, but his enhanced vision subconsciously focused on the clock in his bedroom and he knew it was time for him to go to bed. Iruka was going to flip when he saw Naruto in the morning. Naruto opened his eyes with a start and glanced over to his alarm clock before nearly screaming. He was going to be late. Gotta hurry, Naruto shouted repeatedly, pulling on his clothes, can't be late. Naruto found his orange jacket in his bathroom and, as he was zipping it up, turned to see himself in the mirror. His grin broadened threefold when the eyes that were staring back at him were blue and pupilless. I can wait to show Iruka sensei The boy yelled, running and jumping out his window. As he did so, the wind that he broke through forced itself into his room and blew the book Naruto had been reading to its final section. Only part of a word Nami could be read before the wind forced the book shut. Nara, Shikimaru, Iruka called out. Here a lazy voice replied. Pick your head up Shikimaru. Iruka responded as the boy began to lower his head to the desk. A grunt was his answer. Haruno, Sakura, Iruka continued. Here sensei, the pink-haired girl replied happily. At least someone was happy to be there. Hiwaga, Hinata, the man called out. Hi, here, sensei, was the meek response. Uzumaki, Naruto. The room was silent. Naruto, Iruka called out again, lifting his head from the roll call sheet. Has anyone seen Naruto? Hinata began to shift nervously in her seat. It was no secret that she was fond of the boy, so much so that the only person that couldn't seem to tell was Naruto himself. But there was always the problem of the clan, and Hinata feared she may never have the chance to be with him. Her father would never allow it. It was at this point that Naruto burst through the classroom door, orange jumpsuit and all. His spiky blonde hair was all anyone could see until he looked to Iruka with his eyes closed and began apologizing. I'm so sorry I'm late, sensei, Naruto began. I'm sure, Iruka replied flatly, I'm sure you have a good excuse. Naruto nodded his head, I was working on learning a jutsu last night and kinda lost track of time. Oh, Iruka asked, slightly intrigued, well, since you worked on it for so long. I'm sure you wouldn't mind coming to the front of the class and showing them what you learned. Naruto lowered his head and began his trek to the front of the class. Immediately Iruka felt sorry for him. He had never once seen Naruto walk with his head down. Even after people insulted him or threw things at him he would always wear a smile. As Naruto took his place at the front of the class, he lifted his head, and Iruka began to wonder. He realized the boy didn't want anyone to see his eyes. That was why he was staring at the ground, but before Iruka could say anything, the entire class felt it. There was a sudden surge of chakra and the veins around Naruto's eyes bulged, leaving them clearly vivid. When the blonde opened his eyes, the entire class shuddered. Everyone except for a certain blue-haired Hiwaga, Yakugan, Hinata nearly yelled, abandoning her seat and running to the front of the classroom to get a better look at her crush, Naruto. You can use the Byakugan. Iruka jerked in surprise. Not only had Hinata completely ignored the rules of the classroom, but she'd spoken loud enough for everyone to hear her and she didn't stutter. Iruka walked around Naruto to look him in the eyes. Sure enough, he was staring into the pupilless eyes of the Byakugan. Iruka walked over to the door and turned to face the class. Naruto, Hinata, I need the two of you to come with me. Class, another teacher will be here in a moment. So behave yourselves until he gets near. With that, Iruka escorted the two outside the classroom and into another. Hinata, Naruto, I would like the two of you to wait here for a few minutes. I'll be right back, okay? I need to get a substitute teacher to the classroom and call the Hukage. Is this really that big of a deal? Naruto asked, 
feeling that too much was happening for his sake. Iruga was about to answer when a meek voice interrupted him. Yes it is, and Naruto-kun, Hinata answered. The Hiwaga clan T takes great pride in keeping the secrets of our bloodline. And the fact that you activated it alone brings even more questions. Iruka finished for her, seeing she was having a bit of difficulty talking to the boy. Anyway, I'll be back in a few minutes. After a few moments of silence, Hinata felt the pangs of curiosity hit her, and she couldn't seem to stop herself from asking any questions. So, and Naruto-kun, she began, catching the boy's attention. H. How did you activate the Byakugan? I was given some books by Oji San, Naruto replied, for my birthday. One of them was a book on the clans of the village. So I decided to see if I had any of their blood in me. I don't know who my parents were. I see. Hinata responded sadly. So I went through every one of the bloodlines in the village until I came to the Hiwaga bloodline. It had practically no real information on it at all, but it had enough for me to try to activate it. And when I did, well, this is the result. It hurt much worse the first time though. Yes it did. Hinata agreed. Might I ask what this is about, Iruka? The two heard an elderly voice inquire outside the classroom. Something you'll want to see, Hakuj-sama, was his reply. And might I ask why I'm here? Another man asked. Hinata paled. She'd recognize that voice anywhere. Iruka opened the door to reveal the two children, and the three men stepped inside the classroom. All right, Iruka, the old man asked expecting the worst. What has Naruto done and what's it have to do with Hashi's daughter? Actually, it isn't really Hiwaga-san's daughter that this concerns. I just didn't feel it wise to leave Naruto in a room alone for too long and felt Hinata was the best choice to keep him out of trouble. The Hakage nodded his head in agreement, so what is the purpose of calling us here? When Iruka called to Naruto, the boy opened his eyes and, before activating the Bakugan, the words don't tell me he's could be heard. There are few things that had shocked Hiwagahashi in his lifetime, and even fewer that he'd actually expressed. But now, staring at the boy everyone called a monster, Hayashi let his mouth drop. Naruto was a Hiwaga. I guess it's in his blood. Hayashi stated, trying to calm himself. That wasn't very funny, Hiwaga-san. Naruto replied, a pout on his face. At first, Hayashi tried to brush the comment aside, but the look on Naruto's face had already finished Iruka and the Hakage off and before he realized it, he, too, was laughing hysterically at the statement. And the bewildered look on his daughter's face beside the blonde only added to the hilarity. After a few minutes, the adults had calmed down and were now discussing the next possible action. He'll have to be moved into the Hiwaga household, Hayashi stated bluntly, I'm afraid we can have unmarked Hiwaga blood running around the town freely. It's the way of our clan. I understand you reasoning, Hayashi, the Hakage replied, but I can't have him branded. If he is, we both know what will happen. Yes. Yes we do, Hayashi replied, that I'll have to make him a main house member. How do you plan on doing that? The Hakage asked, his curiosity evident. I'll adopt him. The elders won't like it, but I am still the head of our clan, and so long as I am, they'll hold no power against me. You're certain about this? Hayashi, the Hiwaga clan leader motioned for the Hakage to follow him out of the room into the hallway and, as the older man closed the door behind him, Hayashi began to speak. We both know whose son Naruto is, Hayashi stated, and I've never been a big fan of leaving him out in the world on his own. Even some of my own clan hold what he carries against him, but if he's my child under my protection, no one will be able to touch him. The Hakage nodded in agreement, but the honest truth is... I want him around, Hayashi continued, you saw what happened in there, I haven't laughed like that since, I don't know when, and he seems to be able to help my daughter as well, I think having him around will be a very good thing for the Hiwaga clan, if you think this is what's best, then by all means, the Hakage replied, but rest assured that if anything happens to Naruto while he's there, if anyone tries to brand him or eliminate him, I will see to their punishment personally. The statement made Hayashi feel uneasy inside. There was always the possibility that a rogue shinobi would attempt to do something to the boy, even if he was within his protection. The only option Hayashi could think of was to put guards on the boy when he slept, other than that he'd be on his own. Iruka, the Hakage called out. After a moment, the man opened the door and he and the two children filed out. I would like you to continue your class. Take Naruto and Hinata with you. The two of you will come to the Hiwaga compound after class, Hayashi stated, 
I'll be sending house guards to escort you. You are to wait here until they arrive. Hi, Hiwagasama, Hinata replied. Hi, was Naruto's response. Hayashi nodded his head, and he and the Hukage begin to walk down the hall. Behave yourself, Naruto. The Hukage called out to the blonde. Naruto grimaced. It was like the old man could see into his head. When Naruto entered the room, he could feel the eyes upon him. While he was normally looked upon with disdain, he could see the curiosity on the faces of the children before him. They'd thought they had the boy figured out. Now they knew that he was a complete mystery. But there was still one guaranteed stare of animosity. Naruto could feel the hate radiating from a boy by the name of Uchiha, Sasuke. The rest of the class was quite uneventful. The only thing of any interest was Iruga's lecture on the basics of a finer form of chakra control. And before they knew it, the class was over and the children filed out into the courtyard, slowly disappearing with their parents until only three were left. Who do you think you are? Sasuke yelled at Naruto, now that he was certain the three were alone. His fists tightened into balls. I've been trying to activate my Sharingan for years and yet here you are, activating something you're not even supposed to have. Get over it, Naruto replied bluntly, I don't care about your Sharingan, and my activating this has nothing to do with you. Leave me alone. No, I won't stand for this. The boy yelled as he pulled out six Shuriken and twirled them at the blonde. What happened next was something that Hinata would never forget. In movements so fast that they were hardly not notable. Naruto had forced Chakra into his arms and hands and caught all six of the throwing weapons. He'd unintentionally mastered the Jukin Chakra technique. As Naruto dropped the weapons to the ground, he deactivated his Bakugan and turned away from the raging Uchiha. I said leave me alone. Fine, the boy replied, the malice in his tone unmistakable. I don't need weapons to deal with you. Naruto and Hanada could both feel the surge of Chakra gathering in Sasuke's lungs, and before either one could say anything, he released the fire-infused chakra in a single, giant burst. Giant fireball. When the smoke cleared, the only thing that was visible was the scorched earth where the two had been standing. Serves you right, loser, the boy commented to himself. Your act of aggression could be taken as a direct threat to the Hiwaga clan, a man stated from behind Sasuke. The boy quickly turned around to see a main house Hiwaga guard carrying both Hinata and Naruto in his arms. Sasuke scoffed at the man before turning around and walking away. Your instructor and the Hukage will be informed, the guard stated as he sat the two children down. Don't think you'll get away with this without some form of punishment. As the boy made his way out of sight, the guard turned to face Hinata and Naruto. Hinata-sama, Naruto-sen. Please come with me. I've been ordered to escort you to the clan grounds. Thank you, Yami-san, Hinata replied, bowing. Yes, thank you, Naruto agreed. I don't know what I could have done against that just two of his. From what I saw, you handled yourself pretty well, the man replied as they began walking. You managed to stop every one of his shuriken by focusing chakra into your arms. I think our style of fighting will be perfect for you. I cannot allow this. One of the clan elders piped up his tone barely above average, we cannot allow that monster into our household. I agree with Elder Iroku, an elderly woman agreed, there's no telling what he may do once he's here. Why not simply brand him and let him live outside the house? I, for one, will not allow this, Hayashi replied, his stern tone forcing the woman into silence, and the Hukage agrees. If he is branded, it is likely someone from our main house will execute him. Do you not trust our family? Another elder asked. It isn't a lack of trust that makes me say this. The clan head corrected. I am simply not oblivious. If I may speak freely, Hiwagasama, one of the elders requested. You may. I don't know what you feel towards this boy, but I feel I am speaking for this entire council when I say that we want nothing to do with him. The boy brings chaos wherever he goes and I feel he may bring an end to our order if you take him in. I see your point, Hayashi agreed. But, if I may be so bold, Hiwagasama, another man asked. Feel free, Hizashi. I feel as though the chaos this boy brings may make our tie stronger. I've always felt as though the clan has needed something more to it. We are practically machines. I feel this boy may bring to this clan what it is missing. Spoken like a true leader, Hayashi complimented. I've decided to take Naruto in as one of my own. He will be a Hiwaga. Hi, Hiwaga-sama, the elders replied in unison. Hayashi, Hizashi, Negi, and Hanabi were all standing outside when Hinata and Naruto arrived. After a few warm greetings and Yami informing the main and branch heads of the Uchiha incident, Hizashi knelt down to introduce himself to Naruto. My name is Hizashi, the Hiwaga man told Naruto. 
I'm the brother of Hayashi here and Hinata's uncle. I am also the branch clan head. Branch? Naruto asked, confused. You'll come to understand our ways soon, child, Hisashi replied. But until then, I'd like to welcome you, on behalf of all the branch house, to the Hiwaga clan. Hisashi bowed to Naruto and the blonde returned the courtesy. My name is Neji, the younger Hiwaga replied. I am Hinata's cousin, Hiwaga-sama's nephew an heir to the branch house. Naruto bowed to the slightly taller boy before he turned to Hayashi. This is my youngest daughter, Hanabi, he introduced, but the girl stayed hidden behind his leg, and she is a little shy of new people. I'm sure she'll get used to you. Naruto bowed to her and she nodded her head slightly in response. And if you didn't know, I am Hiwaga Hayashi, head of the Hiwaga clan, Hayashi continued. You'll be learning a lot about the Hiwaga clan in the next few years, and there will be certain things expected from you as such. You'll be introduced to a few others today before we return to your apartment for your belongings. At the end of the school year, you will be removed from the academy to be homeschooled until your final year of the academy, where you will return to finish your more practical classes and pass your final exam to become a shinobi of the Hiwaga clan. Are there any questions? Naruto shook his head. If he was expecting anything from joining a clan, it most certainly wasn't this. Good. You will be attending your homeschooling with Hinata here, Hayashi stated, motioning to his daughter, as she will be removed from the academy classes until the final year as well. Naruto nodded his head dumbly. Very well, let's begin the tour, Hayashi finished, motioning Naruto inside. It was true, Naruto wasn't expecting much from joining a clan. He didn't think they'd even allow him to join a clan seeing how everyone seemed to hate him. But this was the farthest from what he'd expected. He was being indicted into the prestigious Hiwaga clan. And the whole process just seemed to confuse him. The only thing that really crossed his mind as he was guided through the halls of the building was a single thought. What did I just get myself into? Naruto shifted about uncomfortably in his room. He'd been with the Hiwaga for nearly four months now. And, other than the blonde hair and light blue eyes, he easily passed for one of them. How are things going? Naruto-kun, Hizashi asked, surprising the boy from behind. I, I'm well, Hizashi-sama, the blonde stammered in response. Now, now, I can see you're uncomfortable, the branch head replied, patting Naruto on the shoulder, but the garments you're wearing are required for several reasons. Naruto gave the man a slightly disbelieving glance before nodding. He couldn't see why he was required to wear the outfit. He felt like he was wearing a dress. Why do I need to wear this? Hizashi-sama. Naruto dared to ask. The Jukan, the man replied matter-of-factly, it requires a lot of specific movements. In a lot of ways it's like a dance. The outfit you're wearing allows you free movement of your arms and legs. Until you've memorized your basic Jukan stances and how they flow, you have to wear that. When you've got the basics down, you can try it with more restricting clothes. Naruto bowed his head in defeat. He was already missing his old life. Sure. He had people he could talk to in an awkward sort of family, but he had so many rules to follow it was baffling. You'll get used to it, Naruto-kun, the Hiwaga male commented, an honest smile on his face. If you say so, Hizashi-sama, the blonde boy replied, a melancholy tone to his voice. Besides, you've got Neji and Hinata here to help you through it. Naruto didn't respond to that one. Hinata was one thing, but Neji took his studies to a different level. He was way too serious in Naruto's opinion. What was that look for? Hizashi asked, a smirk evident on his face. You've never had to study with Neji-san, Naruto replied, a tired look on his face. Hizashi had to laugh at that one. The boy was way too young to wear that expression. You'll get used to him. Who knows, you two may begin to grow on each other. The look that adorned Naruto's face forced Hizashi to burst out in laughter. The blonde definitely brought with him something that was missing from the Hiwaga household. The first few months of Naruto's training were fairly uneventful, save a few bad habits that the boy brought with him. Even in a house full of Byakugan users, Naruto was still making mischief. At one point in time, much to Hizashi's delight and Hayashi's disdain, Naruto had managed to sneak red dye and pour it into the clan head's laundry. When Hizashi had to speak with his brother and found him wearing all pink, he hit his hands and knees crying in laughter. After a long lecture from Hayashi, and the permanent guard stationed around Hayashi's quarters, Naruto gave his word that it would never happen again. After that incident, Naruto ceased his pranking to delve into his studies. He was quick to catch up to his comrades. Around the fourth month of being inducted into the household, 
Naruto was finally done learning the basic stances, and was now required to watch them in action. He and Hinata were required to attend the daily sparring sessions between the older students, with their key goal being memorization. They were to watch how the stances they'd learned months before flowed with each other depending on movements. Before Naruto knew it, he and Hinata had been attending these sparring sessions for months and were now participating in them as well. He had learned more advanced chakra control early on in their training and, while required for the gentle fist, the two were ordered to keep their strikes purely physical. During one sparring session a few months in, Naruto displayed a bit of himself that no one had taken notice to. As Naruto squared off against the older boy, Hiwaga Hayashi found himself entering the training grounds. Hayashi-sama, an elderly Hiwaga gasped. It is an honor to what do we owe this visit. I am simply here to see how the newest member of the main house is faring, Hayashi replied. Is it possible that I could see an honest matchup? You mean with full Juken strikes, Lord? Yes, I'd like to see how far the boys come. Place him against Hikari. Very well, my lord. After a brief time out, Naruto was paired against a different opponent. This one better acquainted to the gentle feast. You are to use any and all of your abilities in this match, the instructor stated. Hayashi-sama wishes to see how far you've come. Naruto and Hikari bowed to the instructor and, before bowing to his opponent, Naruto turned to face his adoptive father. I hope I do proud, Hayashi-sama, Naruto uttered, bowing low. Hayashi returned the bow, and Naruto turned to do the same to his opponent. I will win this match, the boy commented, staring into Naruto's eyes. Naruto didn't respond. Instead activating his Bakugan and assuming his fighting stance Begin The instructor commanded As Hikari charged forward, Naruto closed his eyes and slowed his breathing This went unnoticed by all but one, and now Hayashi was intrigued The first strike was thrown by the other boy, but the next three were done by Naruto He leaned into the strike before throwing his hand upward, knocking his opponent's arm out of the way He then hit the boy in the chest, throwing him a few feet away but the final hit was a mere brush of the boy's other arm. Hayashi was definitely pleased. Naruto had eliminated his opponent and the other boy didn't even realize it. Naruto could see the Tenketsu. The other boy leapt to his feet and charged in again. This time Naruto met him head on. After a few small exchanges, Hayashi noticed Naruto's opponent was beginning to tire and, after activating his Bakugan, his new Y, Naruto was making every hit count. The final exchange wasn't done the way any of the onlookers could have guessed. Naruto front flipped over his opponent, hitting one of the Tenketsu on his neck, forcing him unconscious. At this, Hayashi was both pleased and dumbfounded. It seemed the boy had tweaked the gentle fist, adding his own variations of stances and maneuvers, but what pleased Hayashi the most was the final blow Naruto landed. The very last hit should have been in Naruto's blind spot. Naruto bowed at the fallen form of his opponent, then to his instructor, and finally to Hayashi. I am very pleased at your development so far, Naruto. Hayashi commented as he returned the bow. You've made me proud. Naruto blushed slightly and bowed once more as Hayashi exited the training grounds. Even if he was just a beginner, Naruto was showing great potential. It seemed as if the Juken was meant for him after all. After the end of his first year as a Hiwaga, Naruto's life turned in a direction he was definitely not happy with. His sparring sessions had been reduced to only four times a week, with every other day being filled with studies. It was like being in school for 24 hours a day. He had to learn the history of the Hiwaga clan and its association with Kano Hegekir as well as the policies of the Hiwaga household. Every Monday was filled with different facts about the clan and its origins. Tuesdays, Naruto learned about the other major clans in Kano Hegekir, as well as a few minor ones. This lasted the majority of the day and, just a few hours before turning in for the night, he had his first sparring session of the week. Wednesdays, he learned the history of Kano Hegekir and the politics surrounding it and its allies. Thursdays, he learned of the other major ninja villages before his second sparring session of the week. Fridays, he learned of the lesser ninja villages and of their associations with the larger villages. Saturdays, he learned the history of ninjutsu and its association with the samurai clans before his third sparring session of the week. And on Sundays, he learned the history of their world, including the great ninja wars that had gone on throughout time. While the day ended off with his personal sparring session with Hashi. Hinata, Neji, and Hizashi. As for his personal level, 
Naruto stayed pretty much the same. Hayashi quickly began training Naruto to hold in his emotions a bit and eventually Naruto discovered that, so long as he held his Hiwaga persona in public or in front of the elders, Hayashi wanted Naruto to keep himself something about changing the Hiwaga. Whatever the case, Naruto quickly adapted to his new environment and began to try to fit in. But the blonde hair and blue eyes did pose him a bit of a dilemma in that aspect. Naruto's first friend in the Hiwaga household was Hinata. She was the only one that didn't hold some unknown grudge against him. She was quickly followed by Neji who, indiscriminately, made sure to put the branch members in their place when they glared at the boy. His studies were continued under both Hayashi and Hizashi, while more the latter. Seeing as Hayashi was the clan head, he eventually moved up to learning different languages and such and, before he knew it, another year had passed by. This is when his practical studies became more prominent. He, Neji, and several other boys would run an obstacle course set up behind the compound in the early mornings before their sparring matches in the afternoon and, after a 10 minute cool down, their workouts got worse, target practice, fighting while partially disabled and fighting groups of enemies were just a few of the exercises they were put through. Again, though, Naruto and the group found themselves quickly setting into the routine. Around six months after their training, there was uproar in the Hiwaga household. Apparently the shinobi ruler from the Land of Clouds had attempted a kidnapping on Hanabi. The man had been thwarted when Hizashi came to check on the oddly quiet young girl and found her drugged and passed out in the arms of the unknown shinobi. Immediately, Hizashi took the offensive and knocked the man out cold. The shinobi ruler from the Land of Clouds was now being held captive by Kaneha. The uproar was that the main branch guards hadn't seen the man enter. Hizashi-sama, Naruto inquired of the older man, what's going on? Is everyone alright? Everything is fine, Naruto-kun, Hizashi replied, fixating a smile on his face. Someone tried to kidnap Hanabi. But I stopped them. Naruto returned the man's smile before bowing and retreating to his quarters for the night. A few weeks after the attempted kidnapping, Naruto was informed that the man was tried for treason to Cloud and sentenced to death, but it didn't stop several of the clan members from mumbling about death because he was caught. Naruto didn't care about what happened to the man, honestly. His main concern was the well-being of both Hanabi and Hinata. This sort of thing couldn't have been easy on either of them. And it wasn't that long after that he became a shoulder to lean on for both girls, with Neji entering the academy. Now, Naruto, Hinata, I expect the two of you to uphold the Hiwaga name and image outside, Hayashi ordered the two as he led them to the compound gates. Do I make myself clear? Yes, Hayashi-sama, the two replied in unison while bowing. Right now, Naruto and Hinata wore the same expression, stern and solid, but on the inside, they were jumping up and down and for good reason. They had been cooped up in the clan compound for over three years to the day, and they were finally being let out, their studies finished. There were, however, different reasons they were ecstatic. Naruto was glad he could finally run around town again. Hinata was happy she could be with Naruto outside of the ultimate of the prying eyes, the Byakugan. As the two exited the main entranceway, Hayashi smiled. Whether his daughter knew it or not, he could see past her eyes and the smile that graced her lips as they turned and left didn't go unnoticed. So the academy starts back up tomorrow. Naruto mumbled after a moment of silence. Hi, Naruto-kun, Hinata replied. It doesn't really seem fair. The blonde whined, though only Hinata could hear him. We just finished our studies in the clan and now we're stuck in school again? I kinda wanted a break. Naruto-kun, you know the reason it's set up like this, she answered. Yeah. I guess. There was another moment of silence as the two walked into the market district of town. Well, if nothing else, I get to show Iruka-sensei what I can do. Hinata smiled at her crush's antics. No matter how down he was, he could always find some way to cheer himself and those around him up. Before the two knew it, Naruto had, subconsciously, led them to Ikaraku's Raymond stand and, after a moment of conversing, the two sat down for a meal. Hey. Old man, Naruto called out. Who are you calling old you? Tuki replied sternly, turning to face the voice. Is that you, Naruto? You got it, old man. The boy replied. There was good reason Tuki didn't recognize his favorite customer. He looked nothing like he had before. Naruto had easily grown a foot taller over the years, thanks to the food at the Hiwaga household, and his blonde hair wasn't just shaggy anymore. It was long. The front still spiked out like it used to 
but the back now hung freely nearly halfway down his back. His looks weren't the only thing that changed though, as he now wore a loose black t-shirt and slightly baggy tan cargo pants. The boy Naruto that had gone to the Hiwagas was gone, replaced with the much taller and leaner teenage version, or at least that was what Aim had said. So what have you been doing for the past few years, Naruto? The old man asked as he served the two their bowls. Training, Naruto replied through mouthfuls of ramen, his Hiwaga manners forgotten. Ah. So it's true then. Aim stated as she gave Naruto and once over, you've been taken in by the Hiwaga. Naruto swallowed his last spoonful and turned his gaze in Aim's direction. She both gasped and blushed. Whether she wanted to admit it or not, despite being a good five years younger, Naruto was quite handsome, and those pupil-less, cerulean blue eyes didn't help in the least. They showed his true depth. His kind and gentle nature. After a moment of silence, it was Hinata's fidgeting that brought Aim out of her trance. The woman knew that Hinata had a crush on the boy and could only guess that her movements were her way of letting others know that she'd already staked her claim on him. Aim smiled at her after a moment and came to gather their bowls. You ready for your next, Naruto? Tuki called back from over a steaming pot of noodles he was preparing. Sorry, old man, but I've got to head back out. There are a lot of things I want to see before the day's over. This is my first day out in three years and I'm gonna make the most of it. Naruto replied, jumping off the stool and grabbing Hinata's wrist. To say Tuki was surprised was an understatement. He'd been making ramen for the boy for nearly ten years, and never once had Naruto left without having at least five bowls. Well, come back and see us sometime, you know you're welcome. The man called to their backs. As the two walked out of sight, Aim turned to her father. It's not a crush anymore, Dad. Yes, I see it too. She's completely fallen for him, Tuki replied smiling. They'd make a good couple. After several hours of walking around and visiting different shops, the two found themselves heading back, reluctantly, to the Hiwaga estate. After a few minutes, however, Hinata noticed Naruto was headed back out and called to him. Where are you going, Naruto-kun? She asked. I remembered something I wanted to pick up outside. I was going to go back and get it earlier, but I kinda forgot, Naruto replied sheepishly, running the back of his head and smiling broadly. Want me to tag along? She asked. Nah, I'm good. I remember where it is. I'll be back in about half an hour, he stated as he made his way to the gates. Hinata felt a little let down, but she knew that even if he had said yes, half an hour was too long for her to be out. She had her own duties as heir to attend to first, and it was because of this that she reluctantly, tore her gaze from her crushes retreating back and headed towards her father's chambers. It was a beautiful autumn morning, and the two could feel it like no one but a Hiwaga could, the touch of the earth, the gentle gusts of wind, the sounds of birds chirping but most of all, they felt comfortable with the each other around. This was how it should be, and they both enjoyed it. They had been talking for a few minutes when the academy came into view and, as ordered per Hayashi, they finished their conversation and stuck on the cold demeanor of the Hiwaga. While Hinata had been doing this for some time, to Naruto it didn't settle very well. But going against the will of the clan head was not something he was looking forward to. Besides, he wanted to relish seeing all the old faces of his classmates and none of them recognizing him. He was looking forward to hearing his name on roll call. As they entered the classroom, they realized they were the first to arrive. They'd even beat Iruka-sensei. The two took their seats beside each other in the back and patiently awaited the arrival of the other students. Hinata had her hands on her knees while Naruto had his hands clasped together in front of his eyes, leaning on his arms. Slowly, the room filled with people, many of whom were conversing amongst themselves, but Naruto didn't go unnoticed. The problem was that no one knew it was Naruto. The boy sitting beside Hinata looked nothing like the Naruto everyone had known. No way. Shikamaru muttered to himself quietly, Naruto couldn't change that much. Besides, he'd be declaring that he was back in front of the entire class by now. Who's the guy sitting beside Hinata? Shikamaru. Ino, a young girl with long blonde hair and a purple outfit, asked, genuinely curious. He's as gorgeous as Sasuke. How should I know? Shikamaru replied in annoyance. I bet he's Hinata's bodyguard or something. Ino looked displeased by his answer. Or maybe. The black-haired boy replied with a bit of a smirk. He's her boyfriend. Shikamaru could see the jealousy written all over Ino's face. She was so predictable. One cute guy gets mixed in and she's all over him. Ino quickly made her way to Naruto's desk and leaned to see under his arms. 
he certainly looked like Ahuaga. So, Ino stated while leaning to see his face. What's your name? Naruto opened his eyes and glared at her, causing her to stand up nervously. Definitely Ahuaga, she thought to herself. Uh, sorry to bother you. Ino apologized, making her way back to her seat. She could feel his gaze following her the entire way. Shikamaru laughed to himself when she took her seat. He'd figured the guy was a Hiwaga, but he was completely sure of it now. Why else would Ino react like that? It was pretty obvious that Ino's answer from the boy was a glare. That's just how Hiwaga men were supposed to act towards all those who weren't in their clan. He glanced over to see the two Hiwagas converse for a moment before returning to their quiet demeanors. You know, Shikamaru thought aloud. Part of me really hopes that's not her boyfriend. They would have a very boring relationship. Attention class. Iruko called out over the commotion. Without Shikamaru's noticing, the entire class had arrived and, as predicted, most of the girls were eyeing the new guy. I will now begin roll call. Answer when your name is called. Iruka finished. The roll call went as expected without any commotion until he reached the H section. Haruno, Sakura. Here, Sensei, the pink-haired Kanoichi replied. Hiwaga. Hinata, the blue-haired Hiwaga rose from her seat and bowed to Iruka, uttering the phrase that had been tattooed into her brain since the day she could talk. Hi, Sensei. Iruka began to call out the next name, when he realized he recognized it and was forced to look around the classroom. Many of the students were confused as well. They were sure he was going to call out the mystery Hiwaga's name next. Instead of saying anything, Iruka just stared at the boy analyzing him from top to bottom. His eyes went wide when he realized there was no error in the roll call sheet. Hiwaga. Iruka paused, looking directly at the blonde enigma, Naruto. The last part came out in a whisper. There were gasps in the crowd of students and the majority of the girls were now blushing furiously. They couldn't believe they were thinking those thoughts about Naruto. Naruto, on the other hand, remained unfazed and held to his Hiwaga training. He stood and bowed to his sensei, uttering a similar phrase as Hinata's. Hi, Iruka-sensei. With that, he took his seat and moved his hands in front of his face once again. The excitement and befuddlement of having called his name, however, didn't die down for several minutes. Only four students in the classroom remained silent, Naruto, Hinata, Shikamaru, and Sasuke. The truth was that Shikamaru had suspected it from the start, but Sasuke knew it for a fact the moment he set his eyes on him. The two met each other's glance, and for a brief moment, their masks fell as they smirked. They had an unspoken agreement. They had a rematch coming. It had been a few years since the day Naruto had awakened his Keke Genkai and both were above such trivial fights as the one Sasuke had instigated back then. But the honest truth was in their blood. The unlikely Hiwaga and the last Uchiha. Yes, there was definitely a rematch waiting for them. As the hours dredged onward, ignoring the students' pleas of mercy, the class finally ended its bookwork side and moved to something a bit more practical, Teijutsu practice. All right class, Iruka mentioned while pairing off names on his clipboard. Today I'm going to be evaluating your Teijutsu. It's mandatory to see where you stand in terms of the others of your class and improve accordingly. So I will be pairing you off with one of your classmates for this test. This will be done in one-on-one -on -one spar with me judging. There will be no use of weapons, shuriken or otherwise and each match will only last five minutes or until one is unable to fight back. Iruka eyed his class, making sure they heard him. All right, I'll call out the first two names. The first few fights were relatively entertaining. One of the students managed to dodge an axe kick only to have his opponent's shoe catch his belt, yanking his pants down with it. It took Iruka a few minutes to get his class back under control after that one. Even Naruto let his mask slip slightly for a few moments. It didn't help that the boy was wearing smiley face boxers. After the first few fights, however, Naruto heard his name called and proceeded to the makeshift arena Iruka has set up. Inuzuka, Kiba, please step forward, Iruka stated, looking at his clipboard. The boy walked up to his place across from Naruto and took up his fighting stance. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask that Akamaru stays out of this one. He counts as a weapon, Iruka stated looking at the puppy on Kiba's head. All right, Akamaru, I can handle this one on my own, Kiba commented, placing the puppy on the ground. Go wait by Sensei. The dog made his way over to Iruka before sitting down and watching his master. Now, begin. Kiba dashed forward and swiped at Naruto, narrowly missing him. I've always wanted to put a Hiwaga in their place, the dog user commented lunging at the blonde again. Hiwaga oh no, 
Iruga thought to himself, his eyes going wide at his mistake, Kiba, Naruto, back down. He was too late. Naruto's movements and the resounding thwack sound that lasted for nearly three seconds told him that the Inuzuka wouldn't be getting up anytime soon. He quickly made his way over to his fallen student while Naruto followed suit. After a moment's hesitation the blonde knelt down and started pressing the dog user's tenketsu, effectively opening them back up, but neither he, nor Iruka, expected Kiba to respond the way he did and Naruto fell onto his back from the force of his opponent's punch. Kiba, stand down. You've already lost, Iruka scolded his student. His words fell upon deaf ears. The dog user was swinging wildly now, all semblance of style forgotten. Now replaced by feral rage. Yes, the boy was definitely fit for the Inuzuka title. Naruto, on the other hand, remained cool and collected, dodging, weaving, moving in strange angles. All the while he wore a smile on his face that only seemed to grow as the dog user's attack became more and more feral and animalistic. The final blow landed was what Iruka knew as a Hiwaga finishing technique, but instead of pumping chakra into his hand, effectively killing his opponent, Naruto turned his palm into a fist and slammed it into the Inuzuka sternum, forcing the air out of his lungs and sending him sprawling in one blow. Winner, Naruto, Iruka stated. Ushering the blonde back to the crowd as Kiba began to regain his composure. Iruka walked back over to the boy and helped him to his feet, scolding him all the way. When I end the match, it's over. Are we clear? As for your Teijutsu style. I'm only slightly acquainted with the Inuzuka clan style, but... That was about where Naruto stopped listening as he turned his gaze to the last Uchiha. The two shared a glance for a moment before Iruka called the next set of names. Eventually the crow dwindled down to only a few students, Sasuke among them. Next up, Sasuke and Naruto. The obsidian eyed Uchiha finished for Iruka. Let me fight Naruto. I'm afraid not, Sasuke, Iruka stated. Naruto already had his match. I'll pair you two up some other time. He barely tried against Kiba, Sasuke replied. He didn't even finish the match with a Juken strike. He wasn't trying. I want to fight him. I'm sorry, Sasuke, but there are no exceptions. Fine. Choji, Iruko continued. Please step forward. The match was hardly that. In a few swift movements, Sasuke had delivered a painful kick to the back of the Akimaki's head, rendering him unconscious. I wanted Naruto. The boy thought to himself. That was amazing, Sasuke. The blonde-haired girl, Ino, practically squealed, while the pink-haired girl, Sakura, attempted something similar. The two were vying for the Uchiha's affections and were promptly ignored. Currently, Naruto was at the front of the crowd, smiling while he watched the remaining students begin their matches. He was completely unaware that there was a young, blue-haired Hiwaga standing a few feet behind him. Wishing she had the courage Sakura and Ino showed towards Sasuke. I heard about your defeat of the Inuzuka boy in class today, Hayashi stated as Naruto took his place at the dinner table. Naruto's look could be described as somewhere between cheapish and shocked. From what I hear, he got in a serious hit. Hayashi continued, something about knocking you onto your back. Hi, Hayashi-sama, Naruto replied. He attacked me as I was unsealing his tenketsu. Hayashi took a sip of his tea as if waiting for Naruto to continue. Iruka-sensei had ordered the match to stop, but I was in the middle of an attack at the time. When I finished, my opponent had been completely disabled, but when I unsealed his tenketsu, he attacked. To avoid him attacking me again I finished the match with a physical version of one of our style's finishing moves. Naruto clarified. Yes, I heard about that one, Hayashi confirmed, and from what I hear, it completely broke through his defense. Hi. Hiwaga-sama. By now Hinata and Hanabi had joined the two at the table and, while Hinata had been there and easily assumed what the two were talking about, Hanabi was completely confused. What did I just miss? The younger girl asked, still a little confused. Something about a finishing move turned physical? Just small talk, Hayashi informed his youngest. Naruto was filling me in on the details of a spar today. Hinata smiled back at the thought of the spar. She hadn't seen Naruto that happy in a long time. Remember, Hinata, Hayashi continued, snapping the young woman out of her thoughts. We have sparring practice in two hours. Hinata almost gulped visibly. She knew today's spar was not going to be a pretty sight. What is this, a joke? Hayashi declared angrily as Hinata tried to pick herself up. They'd only been fighting for a few minutes, and Hinata already looked like she was shot. Hayashi had made the day's sparring session much more intense than the others 
and he was sorely disappointed as his daughter's inability to cope. This is pathetic. He spat, scolding his firstborn. Hanabi is better than this. You're a disgrace to yourself and this clan and even more. Hinata was desperately trying to stand, and had finally made it to her feet. Hayashi was still angry, but he decided to keep the next comment to himself. Even he knew that the next few words that were going to come from his mouth were cold, and he didn't desire to put his daughter through that kind of torment. Give up, Hinata, I'm done. Hayashi stated, and he turned around and began to walk off. You've disappointed me. Go back to your room and continue your studies. Hinata slumped over after her father left the room. She could barely move, but that didn't stop the tears from running down her face. I'm a failure. Was the only thought that crossed her mind. Why would Naruto ever want me? Naruto had been walking past the dojo when he heard her sobbing and his curiosity forced him to open the door. What he saw broke his heart. Hinata was curled up in a ball on the floor crying into her own arms. She hadn't even noticed him enter when she felt his hand on her shoulder. Instinctively, she tried to flee, to get away from whoever had seen her there, but she hadn't even made it to her feet when Naruto pulled her down into his arms and held her there. L let me go. Hinata sobbed into his chest, still forcing her eyes closed. P please, J just L let me G go. No, Naruto replied softly. Her sobs died instantly. And Naruto, she whispered, her sadness being replaced by embarrassment, I I need to G go. No, the boy stated once again, firmly holding her in place. P please. P please and Naruto. I will. But first listen to what I have to say. The young girl nodded her head in response. I'm not smart, Hinata. The boy began, but I'm not stupid. I want you to tell me what happened. Your stutter disappeared a year and a half ago. Something serious happened to bring it back. Tell me Hinata-chan please. He began to loosen his hold on her, but instead of breaking from his arms, Hinata wrapped her own around him, pushing aside her feelings of embarrassment. A father is usually very strict and hard on Emmy in our training. B but today HEW was M much worse. I T think I did something to M make him mad. Nothing could have been bad enough to deserve what he did to you. Naruto interrupted, seeing her smaller body was covered with bruises where Chaka was forced through her skin. I did do no W what I did. B but father was angry. H E completely overwhelmed Emmy and after a W was over, H E C called me a D disgrace. Naruto felt his respect for Hayashi waver. He couldn't believe he would do that to Hinata, no matter what his reasons. I don't care what your father thinks, Naruto replied to her after a moment of silence, in my eyes. You will never be a disgrace. It was a lucky thing Hinata had wrapped her arms around her crush. If she hadn't, there was little doubt in her mind that he would have been oblivious to her affections. Her face felt like it was on fire and her heart felt like it was flying. Suddenly, her father's opinions seemed inconsequential. His Ashi had been coming to check in on his brother's training session with Hinata when he overheard the conversation between Hinata and Naruto and he was both disappointed and pleased at the same time. Disappointed in his brother for his lack of understanding and brutal methods, and pleased at the growth of Hinata and Naruto's relationship. Even if they don't end up together, Hizashi thought to himself, those two will be best friends for life. After the obvious climax of the conversation, the branch house had made his way to his brother's quarters. Someone had to put the man in his place. Hours had passed since the incident, and Naruto found himself drawn to his usual thinking spot. But this time he wasn't alone. Hinata sat beside him on the rooftop just above his room, taking in the magnificent night sky. Naruto-kun. Hinata whispered, catching his attention, thank you for earlier. Don't worry about it, Hinata-chan, the blonde replied. I just find it difficult seeing you without a smile on your face. Hinata couldn't help but blush, and Naruto couldn't help but be completely oblivious to the situation. You're my best friend, Hinata-chan, Naruto continued. And it's really hard to see you sad. I understand Naruto-kun. Hinata replied, you're my best friend too. He smiled at her for a moment, his eyes reflecting how deeply he appreciated her saying that, before his gaze returned to the night sky. The next few weeks that went by were rather uneventful, save the constant curiosity about Naruto and his sudden reappearance. No one ever asked him where he'd gone though. His Hiwaga-like responses were enough. While there were a select few that managed to actually bring themselves to talk to Naruto, he usually just glared at them. He did what was expected of him as a Hiwaga. Naruto began to loosen up as the school year went on, as did Hayashi about the two keeping the Hiwaga appearance. He showed more of himself in class, 
and even began talking to some of his classmates. Before he knew it, there were a few girls attempting to ask him out, but he was so oblivious to it that their constant hinting did nothing but confuse him. In the end, there were two major fan clubs among the girls at school, the Naruto fan club and the Sasuke fan club. As the months went on, the tests at the academy got steadily harder, and eventually Naruto was forced to get Hinata's assistance in studying. During what free time they had, the two were constantly in the books, even if it caused Naruto to get a bit of a headache at times. It was either that or suffer more of Hayashi-sama's discipline. Naruto found the constant headache to be much more preferable. Eventually, the school year came to a close, and it was time for the final exams. Alright, the final exams consist of three basic courses, Iruka stated, calming the class down, Teijutsu, Ninjutsu, and throwing an accuracy. In a few moments, I will lead you to your first destination, but before we begin, I need to go over the details of the courses. All eyes were on Iruka now, hanging on to his every word. Throwing an accuracy will require you to hit the target at least 8 times out of 10. The better your accuracy, the higher your point total. This same concept goes for Teijutsu and Ninjutsu as well. The better the Jutsu or your performance, the higher your point total. If you fail to reach a certain overall score, you fail. If you fail two or more of the courses, you fail. The Teijutsu portion of these courses will pit you against one of the senseis here. You are to do everything in your power to overpower us. Several of the students gave him nervous glances. Don't worry about us fighting back. We will be purely on defense. Whether you overcome us or not doesn't really matter. It's your performance that we are looking for. And last but not least will be the Ninjutsu portion which will be revealed to each of you individually as you enter the chambers to take the exam. Iruka studied the faces around the room. Many of them he knew would pass, but several others were questionable at best. Now if you will please follow me. Iruka turned and walked towards the door and smiled at his students as they came to join him. Many of them wore determination on their faces. Those were the ones he was certain would pass. So these are the genin hopefuls. Huh? A man with a headband covering his eyes asked as Iruka approached him, Look like a bunch of nervous wrecks if you ask me. They are, Iruka replied, taking his place beside the man, but you can't really blame them. True enough, the man walked up to Iruka's class and motioned for them to halt. My name is Hagoku, Jinta, the man stated, and I will be the judge of your throwing an accuracy exam. The man lifted his headband to reveal coal black eyes. When I call your name. You will take your place up at the throwing line and choose 10 projectiles. All of them are top quality, I can assure you, and are razor sharp, so try not to lose any fingers. The class slowly dwindled down as their names were called, many of them passing, save a few exceptions. Haruno, Sakura, the Kolide sensei called out, please take your place at the throwing line. The pink haired girl nervously walked up to the line and stared down her target. You get one practice throw, the man continued offering her his plate of projectiles. One swift movement and a quiet thunk and Sakura's worried expression fell from her face. She hit the target. Finally, with a look of resolve, she took all ten of the weapons in her hands and began throwing them. A steady thunk cone ensued until she threw the last of her weapons. When it made to hit the wood, it bounced off instead. I'm afraid I'm going to have to count that as a miss, young lady, Jinta stated as he took his place beside her. If you can't throw it hard enough to stick it in the target, it could be counted as a hit. Sakura made her way back over to the class, but her final miss didn't get her down. She did it 9 out of 10, after all. Hiwaga, Hinata, the man continued, if you would please take your place. Hinata, for the most part, looked like she was going to faint. A lot was riding on her passing her exams. As she began to trot over to the line, she felt a hand on her shoulder and looked back to see a smiling Naruto. You can do this, Hinata-chan, he stated, his total faith in the blue-haired girl that was all Hinata needed. She continued to the lion and, after a quick practice throw, she proceeded to land shuriken after shuriken in the red and yellow parts of the target. By the time Hinata had finished, Iruka was wearing a smile. Not only had she taken to the exercise with gusto, but he saw Naruto giving her words of encouragement. He was happy to see her come so far. It appeared as though the blonde-haired Hiwaga was having a good impact on her after all. Hiwaga, Naruto, Jinta stated, turning his eyes to the blonde. Naruto began his trek to the lion immediately. I don't really want a practice throw, Sensei, Naruto commented, taking the ten kanai in his hands. Very well, 
You may begin whenever you're ready. One by one the Kanai began to connect with the target, and by the end of it, the proctor was wearing an amused expression. Actually, Sensei, can I have that practice throw after all? The man handed Naruto another Kanai, which Naruto immediately hurled at the target, hitting it directly in the middle and completing the Kanai smiley face he had made. Thanks, Sensei, Naruto stated as he returned to the class. Iruko could only shake his head. At least it wasn't as bad as some of his older pranks. The rest of the exam was rather uneventful, at least until they reached Uchiha, Sasuke, who managed to throw all ten of his weapons at the same time and land them all in the bullseye. Eventually the exam was completed, and Iruka began marching them off to their next destination. This is where you'll be taking your Teijutsu exam, a tan Konoichi with black hair stated as the class fell into place in front of her. You will be paired off with one of the senseis here at the academy and you will attempt to overcome them. They will not be fighting back, so you don't have to worry about getting seriously injured, but don't expect them to just take a beating either. You will be judged on how well you perform by the sensei you're paired off with. Any questions? The class was silent. Good. We will be pairing you off five at a time. That means that only five matches will be going on at one time, the woman stated, grabbing a box from the side of the room. You will each draw a piece of paper from this box, and proceed to the specified mat. The woman walked through the ranks of students, each of them drawing their own lot and proceeding off to the specified mat, until she was left standing with Iruka. So those two are in this class, huh? She asked, staring at the backs of both Sasuke and Naruto. Yeah, Iruka replied, walking up beside her, and I have to say, I've never seen a more promising class in my career. The woman smiled at Iruka. You have the heirs of several clans in this year's class. It wouldn't surprise me if this is the best class ever to graduate from this school but those two. She lifted her hand, motioning to Naruto and Sasuke. Those two are in a league of their own. You have five minutes to try to overwhelm me, a man with a few scars covering his face told the students in front of him. If you are unable to land a single hit, you fail this portion of the exam. You will be fighting me one on one, so will A. The man trailed off. Looking at his roster, Inuzuka, Kiba please step forward. The match began immediately, but Naruto's attention was torn from the fight in front of him when he heard cheering from the students at the next mat over, and saw Sasuke painting while the teacher in front of him was on one knee, coughing roughly. Sasuke must have landed a critical blow to get that kind of response. Probably a good shot. A few mats down he could see another teacher dodging and weaving as Yanata attempted to strike him. He couldn't help but smile at the seriousness on her face and the panicked look on the teachers. Looks like someone forgot about the juke and Naruto thought behind his smirk. Before he knew it, Naruto's name was called and he took his place in front of his teacher. Begin whenever you're ready. I'll start the clock as soon as you attack. Naruto assumed his stance and it appeared as though a look of confusion followed shortly by realization crossed his teacher's face as he, too, assumed his stance. Yakugan. Naruto charged his opponent, only for his first attack to be completely thwarted. As the instructor pushed his arm to the side, the blonde spun around and hooked his left leg behind that of his teacher's and pulled sending him to the ground. 1. Naruto stated as his teacher was getting back up, but as he tried to regain his feet, he felt his left leg go numb. This isn't going to end well, the teacher stated, holding his leg. 2. Naruto continued his count as he landed a glancing blow to his opponent's right forearm. I wasn't expecting him to put up this much of a fight. The man thought to himself as he began weaving through Naruto's attacks. I've never fought an academy student this well versed in Teijutsu. 3. Naruto stated after his fingers ran along the teacher's side. By now, the teacher was quite frustrated. Not only was he having trouble with his left leg and right arm, but now he was having trouble with his lungs. Hinata turned her gaze to Naruto's match, having just completed hers. When she saw it, Naruto moved fast. Too fast for her to see. He had covered 10 feet and landed a serious blow to the teacher's stomach in less than the blink of an eye. But that, Hinata whispered to herself, it's the same as that time. She barely remembered when Naruto had first joined the Hiwaga household, and even less the time before but now, after all the time they'd known each other, she remembered his short fight with the Uchiha. The proctor, on the other hand, felt like he was trying to move through water. His arms felt heavy. He was having trouble breathing, and his legs felt like jelly. You are within the realm of my divination, the blonde stated coldly, 
assuming a unique stance and facing his instructor. I can stop his next attack should I call the match? The instructor thought to himself as Naruto began his charge. No. Pride won't let me. Only one other option then. As Naruto was about to begin his attack, he felt the air leave his lungs. The instructor had attacked him. He began to back up, still holding his stomach and trying not to fall when he heard the sensei breathe a sigh of relief. That was stupid of me. Naruto thought to himself, fighting to catch his breath, I shouldn't have let my guard down like that. No doubt Hayashi-sama's going to use this against me. A smirk crossed Naruto's face as his bearing returned to him. What are smiling at? The instructor asked, a cold demeanor surrounding him. Hayashi-sama's gonna have a field day with this one. Naruto stated as he began walking towards the teacher, you landed a blow on me. That was foolish on my part. The instructor began to worry a bit as the grin on Naruto's face turned to a full-blown smirk. I forgot that the best defense any ninja has ever come up with has been filled with offensive maneuvers as well. I forgot to look beneath the shadows. By now the teacher was slowly backing up. The smirk on Naruto's face had turned slightly maniacal. I haven't had this much fun in a long time. Shall we continue, sensei? The instructor nodded slowly and Naruto bolted after him. Had the teacher thought he was at a disadvantage before, he now knew Naruto had been trying to keep it slightly professional. In other words, he was holding back. 6. Naruto counted quietly as the man felt chakra enter his body from his side. A few seconds later he heard another whisper from the blonde. This one sounded like 12. He started getting worried as his body stopped responding properly and that was when he realized it. He was scared. This Hiwaga was purposefully counting quietly so he would strain to hear what he said, and each time he heard a number, he wondered where he'd been hit. Little by little he began to fear for his safety as his body became less and less responsive. The boy was playing on his fears as well as his knowledge, but as Naruto continued his onslaught, the instructor heard something that completely erased his fears. The timer. Very good, Hiwaga, the man stated as Naruto walked over and began unsealing his Tenketsu. You're very talented in the area of Teijutsu. Probably more so than someone your age should be. Thank you, Sensei, Naruto replied as he continued his work. A moment later, the man stretched his aching muscles before calling the next student to the mat. It seems you're right, Mairu, Iruko commented towards the black-haired Kanoichi, continuing their previous conversation. Those two really are in a league of their own. All right, when I call your name, file into the classroom to complete the ninjutsu portion of this exam. Iruko called out to the waiting students. Slowly, the calls room began to empty as students were called to complete the final test of the exam. Hiwaga, Hinata, a man with silver hair called out after opening the door to the examination room. The young heiress did her part to look as neutral as possible while walking down the stairs, but inside she was nothing but butterflies. This was a defining moment. After a few moments, the silver-haired man once again opened the door. Hiwaga, Naruto. The blonde stood and began his trek down to the room as well. All right, Naruto, Iruka stated while examining the papers in front of him, you are required to use Karimi, hence, and Bunshin no Jutsu in order to pass this part of the exam. For hence, I need you to transform into Mizuki Sensei over there and for Bunshin, I need you to make at least three acceptable clones. Naruto, for the most part, did his best to look unfazed as he replaced himself with a chair on the opposite side of the room and then turned into the silver-haired man guarding the door, but the last jutsu was something he knew he didn't quite grasp. But something Hayashi had stated months prior rang in his head. Something about too much chakra. Sensei, Naruto stated as he prepared for the technique, you said at least three clones, right? Iruka nodded the affirmative, is there a maximum? Well, no. I guess not. Why do you ask? Iruka replied, seeing a mischievous glint in Naruto's eyes that he knew all too well. Might I step outside for this part of the exam? Sensei? It's a little small in here. Iruka visibly paled, but nodded once again. Naruto jumped out the window of the room, landing safely outside, before initiating the just two. But where the minimum was three and there was no maximum allotted, Iruka still hadn't expected that many. Very good, Naruto, Iruka stated. Giving up counting after he hit 30, you pass. As Naruto passed through the door on the other side of the room, he collected his height and was immediately tackled into a hug. You did it, Naruto-kun. Hinata practically squeaked. And you did too, I see, Naruto added after hugging her back. I'm so happy. Hinata continued, closing her eyes as she held Naruto tighter, 
were both Jen and now Hinata didn't notice, or didn't care, but half of the girls in the room were looking on in envy. Right now, he was hers. The other girls didn't stand a chance. That's the end guys if you enjoyed then make sure to leave a comment this is Chaos Shinobi signing off.